This week on the Honor Roll Podcast, we'll be talking about climate education and action with Professor Hargrove and student leader Morgan Matthews. All that and more coming up next. Hey, Honors Bulls, welcome to the Honor Roll Podcast, the flagship podcast of the Judy Genshaft Honors College Podcast Network. I'm Ridla Singh, a fourth year student studying biomedical sciences and psychology at the Honors College. Today, my co-host is Fabiana Rakenna, a second-year student studying marketing and business analytics. Fabiana, how was your spring break? It was super fun. One of the highlights of my trip was that, so I went to Madrid, and I saw the end of a rainbow. No way. Yeah. I, like, I walked to it. I actually didn't even know that you could just see the end of a rainbow. I didn't either, but we, like, walked to it, and I have never seen a natural phenomenon like that. Was it on St. Patrick's Day? It was not. It was close. Okay. Did you see the pot of gold? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know. That's what I was looking for. But no, how was your spring break? It was pretty good. All right. Well, as always, we like to start the podcast off with one big question. So my question this week is, what is your favorite USF tradition? Well, given that I'm a transfer student, I'm new here, this is my first year, so I haven't experienced all of USF's traditions, but I'm really looking forward to the USF week and Rocky's birthday, which I think is next week. Yeah, it is next week. And I love USF week, specifically the talent show. My dance team is performing. That's fun. Um, Yeah. But speaking of USF traditions, today we'll be talking about a new tradition, the USF climate teach-in with honors professor Andrew Hargrove and Morgan Matthews. That's right. It's the third annual climate teach-in hosted by the Honors College, but it's available to all students at USF. And this year it's growing to include a week's worth of events across the Tampa campus, and I'm super excited to learn more. I'm so excited to talk to Dr. Hargrove and Morgan and learn more about this initiative. Coming up next... If we don't talk about climate change, we won't act to stop it. Join over 18 student environmental organizations and the Judy Genshaft Honors College for the 2024 Climate Teach-In. Part of the worldwide teach-in on climate and justice, this year's teach-in is a week-long celebration of climate education and action. Events will include discussions, art exhibits, research fairs, and fun-filled activities including the USF Community Gardens Farmer's Market, healthy cooking demonstrations, and a Climate 5K. Throughout the week, the USF community will come together to tackle large-scale environmental issues with sustainable and innovative solutions. Events will be hosted across the USF Tampa campus from April 1st through 7th. Check the Honors College webpage for more information. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Hargrove and Morgan. We're so happy to have you here today. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Sure. My name is Dr. Hargrove, and I'm a faculty here in the Honors College I teach about sustainability and environmental science from a very interdisciplinary perspective. And I also lead the initiative for Sustainable Futures. And as part of that initiative, we have put together this climate teaching. And I'm Morgan. I'm an undergrad studying environmental science and policy. I'm also a student in the Honors College, and I'm president of the student organization GLOBE, which stands for Global Leaders Outreach for a Better Environment. And this year, we're participating in the climate teaching at USF. Great. And then can you guys, I know you guys touched on this, but can you guys tell us a little bit about your organization or your role in the climate teaching? I guess I'm the de facto leader of the climate teaching. I propose that we join the worldwide climate teaching three years ago. Um, I pitched it to the Honors College, and they were all on board. So then I became the director of this initiative at USF. Each year, I've tried to make it bigger and better and try to reach more students. And so this year, I've outreached to every student environmental organization that I could find to get them involved in the planning and the organization and the events, because I really want this event to feel like it's by students and for students. I want it to feel like peers can teach each other 
about how to build a more sustainable future. And then GLOBE is on the internal communications committee within the climate teaching. So we're helping make sure that all the organizations are able to plan their events in a timely manner and have everything squared away before that climate teaching week. Our club is doing a collaboration with Tampa Bay Watch to do a microplastics lab. And that'll be on April 4th from 3 to 4 p.m. So could you tell us a little bit about how it works with other universities or what other people do at other countries? Sure. I think that climate change is a very interdisciplinary and collaborative endeavor, right? Trying to overcome a global problem as big as climate change requires the the work of everyone in every sector and across the world. And so Bard College, about seven years ago, decided that they wanted to start this thing called the Worldwide Teach-In on Climate Justice in Action. And they started that by just reaching out to as many educational organizations as they could find and asking them, hey, would you like to participate in this one-day event where you teach about the environment, where you teach about climate change and what are solutions to climate change? And since then, it's grown to include hundreds of organizations across the world and tens of thousands of students participating in learning about how to solve climate change in a collaborative, interdisciplinary uh, world. So that's what the worldwide climate teaching is. But also it's just trying to teach people in a, in a more casual setting how to engage with this big problem, right? It's it's really hard for people to have these conversations because maybe they don't feel like they have the knowledge or maybe they don't feel comfortable doing things because they don't know how effective it's going to be. And this is a space for students to come and learn and engage in a conversation, try things out to see what works in a space that's safe and in a space that there are experts around that might be able to help them to, you know, learn what could be effective and learn what might not be effective in a space that that's the point of of the conversation. For sure. I think it's really important to break those boundaries and kind of make this accessible to all people. Um, I was going to ask what, if you could give us a little bit of a rundown about the USF Climate Teach-In, how you started it. So this year, the Climate Teach-In, I really wanted it to be engaged with the organizations on campus that were student-led, that were already doing work in sustainability and the environment. So I reached out to all of the clubs that I could find and asked them if they wanted to participate. And every club wanted to participate. And that also gave me access to their networks so they were able to find other clubs who wanted to participate who maybe I didn't find in my initial search for environmental clubs. And as part of this year's climate teaching, we've moved from being a one-day event to being a week-long event, and we've also moved from being an honors college event to being a USF-wide event. And that's really exciting because we're going to have so many interesting and fun things going on. So all of these clubs, all of these organizations who are your peers have been planning these things and and are really excited to share them with with you. So we have things like an off-the-wall climate art gallery, and we have campus cleanups and a student research fair and a career and internship fair if if you're interested in doing a climate career or environmental career. We'll have crafts and labs for environmental science and we'll have cooking demos and we're going to have a crocheting event where you can learn how to crochet with recycled plastic bags and we're going to have a social and a 5k and a farmer's market so it's just super exciting to be working with all of these energetic students who are really passionate about this and just want to share that with their peers and it it just feels incredible to be part of this group that is already doing good work and I'm trying to give them the platform through which they can amplify the work the good work that they're already doing. Yeah so Morgan do you want to tell us a little bit about what your organization is hosting then and how you got involved and you know what your reaction was to I guess Dr. Hargrove like reaching out to you? 
Yes. So I actually already knew Dr. Hargrove from my Systems of Sustainability trip. It was a spring break study away trip. Um, What was that? 2020? Last year. Yes. Yes. Last spring. Um, And so he reached out to me and my organization and I immediately wanted to get involved. I'm open to any collaboration with other student orgs. We actually just joined a coalition called the U.S. Sustainability. USF Sustainable and Ethical Practices Coalition, and that's really allowed us to communicate and collaborate with orgs we hadn't already gotten involved with. And so this was kind of the next step to have a bigger, broader event that applied to the entire campus. And so we're doing a microplastics lab, um, I said with Tampa Bay Watch, and we're also collaborating with the Marine Bio Club. They weren't initially involved with the climate teaching, but I actually met them at a organization fair, I think it was the climate fair, And uh, I thought that their mission aligned with ours and was really applicable to our lab. And so they're helping us to plan as well. That's really cool. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your committee and who you worked with? So there are a couple other organizations in the committee. We work closely with the Honors College, um, Katie specifically. Um, She's helping to organize that committee. And so we just communicate regularly uh, through meetings over Teams and just have weekly check-ins. We have uh, posts on the Teams channel to let everyone know uh, what the different committees are doing. So it's basically a... a a collaboration of notes on that page so that everyone is able to keep track of the organization. Yeah, the internal communications committee is is really vital and important, as you can imagine, with an event that has this many organizations and this many students involved with it. Um, things can easily get lost. Things can easily get miscommunicated. So having an entire committee that's dedicated to making sure that all the groups have the proper communication and know what's going on has actually been extremely important and vital. So thank you so much for the work that you're doing with that committee. Um, It is integral to the success of this event. Yeah, thank you. Morgan, I wanted to ask, is this the first year that you're involved with the climate teaching or have you done this before? I participated in it last year. I would say it was smaller scale. Mm -hmm. The event I attended was the tabling event for different student orgs that was in Juniper Poplar Hall on the first floor. I think the great thing about that was it was very visible to students. You could walk in and see all the tables and come and visit. And it functioned the same way as I think that climate fair did, where I got to meet other org leaders that I hadn't already connected with. Um, But I think this will be more interdisciplinary, more engaging, because it involves more hands-on learning this year. I think we were really just starting things on campus last year to get the word out. No, that makes sense. There's definitely going to be growth from this year to the last. And Dr. Hargrove, how would you say that things have changed from last year's climate teaching? Um, Well, first of all, we went from being a one-day event to being a seven-day event. So that's a really big change, right? It's, It's a whole week now from Monday through Sunday. Last year it was one day, it was just the Wednesday, and we had an all-day, basically, different things going on throughout the day. But this week, I mean, this year, we're going to have, you know, events going on every day for the first week of April. So that's the biggest change. Um, Another change is that I'm leaning into the collaboration aspect of it. I'm trying to get as many groups as possible involved. I don't want this to be... A Dr. Hargrove event. I want this to be a USF event. I want this to be led by students. I want students to be able to show their passion for this for this topic to their peers. And so I've tried to put together a team of people who can do that, who can get the the you know the words of the students out into the general public and really just facilitate students being able to share their perspectives and their passions in the way that feels the best to them. And then we offer support for that. Mm -hmm. I'm someone who's really like passionate about sustainability, but it's kind of hard to know where to start. Morgan, how did you get into sustainability? Is it tie into what you study or like what brought you into the field? 
Yeah, so it ties in with what I study. So I study science and policy, and that combination is essentially sustainability since you have to kind of consider all aspects of the process to meet sustainable goals um, when it comes to sustainability. So for GLOBE specifically, I got involved my freshman year just as a general member, and then the president at the time was a really great mentor to me, so she helped me uh, start my recycling project, and I was a project lead for that. I passed a resolution through the student government um, basically to to show that students were supportive of an initiative like that to improve our campus infrastructure. And that led to me becoming president this year. And um, I've really seen my group grow and sort of define its mission a bit better. So um, we're really big about having an educational aspect and a hands-on aspect to each of our events. And uh, this semester specifically, we're focusing more on wildlife, ecology, and restoration and, and things like that. What would you say to students that want to get involved at the climate teaching and in sustainability practices? So for the climate teaching specifically, we have a really great marketing campaign going on. Um, each group has their own materials that they can use uh, to convey their message and their events. And so that's going to be primarily on Instagram, but also on Bulls Connect. Really any way that students get their information about events, it'll probably be there. Um, so I just suggest going to one, a couple, a few events that you're interested in. Um, there's going to be a, a passport um, where I, I believe you can get an award or a prize at the end if you attend so many events. And so I think that's a really fun incentive. And there's no downside to attending as many as possible. Each one is meant to be fun and engaging and a great way to meet new people. Celebrate the art and sustainability with the Judy Genshaft Honors College community at the Off the Wall Fine and Performance Art Festival. The exhibit will be on display from April 1st to 5th in the first floor atrium of the Judy Genshaft Honors College building. Part of the 2024 USF Climate Teaching, the theme of this year's exhibit is sustainability and environmental awareness. All our community members are invited to enjoy the exhibit. And you can come out and support your fellow Honors Bulls on Friday, April 5th for a live event including music, video, spoken word, and dance. Check the Honors Events webpage for more off-the-wall information. See you there! Is there an event that you're looking forward to the most? This is a question for all of you. The most? It's really hard to choose. Obviously, I'm excited about my event, but I'm also excited about the Climate 5K. Um, I'm a runner, so I would love to participate, but my group is also going to table there. And uh, the farmer's market, I think having that on campus will be really cool. And uh, the crochet event, I'm yeah, excited I, about that. I would like to do that one as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to crochet, but I'd love to get into it, especially when it comes to using recyclable materials. And they'll teach you, which is incredible. Yes. Um, to answer both of the, your last two questions, I think that the for a centralized place on how to get involved with the climate teaching, you can go to the climate teaching website, which is hosted on the USF Honors website. If you just type in USF Climate Teaching, that will be the first thing that comes up. And then to get more, to get involved with sustainability in general, I highly recommend joining a group. And so there are going to be over 20 groups, student environmental organizations involved with the climate teaching. All of them are open and accepting of new people, new people who just want to learn, people who are passionate, people who are just curious. All of these groups would welcome any of you to come and join their groups. But then there's also non-USF organizations that you could join. There's Tampa Bay Watch, for instance, like Morgan's group is is going to be partnering with. But there are environmental non nonprofits and environmental businesses all over the Tampa Bay region. And so I would just recommend thinking about things that you're passionate about and then seeing if somebody's already started doing it and then join them. Right? I think that one of the things that is a myth in in the sustainability world is that you have to do it yourself, is that you have to kind of blaze your own path or reinvent the wheel or start your own your own nonprofit or your own, you know, community organization. 
And that was true at one point, but now there are so many initiatives going on all over the place that you really can just join an already organized um, group and just ask them, hey, how can I help here? And that's an incredible way to get involved. Um, the last way is the, the city of Tampa has a sustainability and climate resilience team, and you can join the, what they're calling the green team as a student intern and start being involved in sustainability work at the city level. And so that's another awesome uh, opportunity for students who want to get involved. I would say that for me, like, I'm really, really excited for the Off the Wall Gallery. Could you guys tell us a little bit more about what that will look like and, like, the live shows and stuff like that? Yeah, I'm really excited about the Off the Wall Gallery as well. That's going to be led by Professor Parachi and her uh, curatorial practices class. And they're going to put together a professional gallery of environmental art that has been submitted by students from around the the university, and it's going to be hosted in the honors atrium the entire week. So any time during the week of teaching, you can come to the honors college building, and on the first floor, there will be a a gallery set up where the theme is the climate teaching and environmental sustainability. And we're going to have all types of media. There will be sculpture and photography and painting and poetry. So that's going to be an excellent events and I'm so happy to have Professor Parachi on our team and organizing that event. Yeah, I love that they're tying in sustainability and art. I also heard that they're doing a remix of old clothes and they're like taking old clothes, just donations from students here at USF and upcycling them into new pieces that are a lot more exciting. So I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. Yeah, no, definitely. And then how would you guys say um, that student organizations that are looking to get involved in the upcoming, you know, next year in our fourth annual <laughs> climate teaching can go about that? So I would just recommend reaching out to any orgs involved. They're, each one is welcoming to new organizations who are interested, and they don't have to have a direct environmental focus. It could be you know, we talked about how it was in interdisciplinary, so it could be just slightly related, or maybe they just want to be involved in this event specifically in some way. Something sparked their interest, and they want to get involved. Um, so emailing any student org leaders, messaging on Instagram, um, emailing Dr. Hargrove directly, any of those things would be great paths. Yeah, and I think that one thing that's really important that we're trying to emphasize with the climate teaching is that it takes everybody to solve a global problem and that this isn't just the responsibility of environmental scientists and um, legislators and people who, you know, own major, own major corporations. This is about everybody. So whatever group you are a part of, whatever student organization you're a part of, there is a way that your expertise and your interests contribute to building a more sustainable future. And what we want to do is bridge that gap. We want to bring sustainability into the conversation. So, for instance, we have the Crochet Club, which you're, which you're probably thinking, well, that's not a sustainability club, right? That's not an environmental club. But actually, they're, they're very much uh, an environmental club. They're figuring out how to recycle supplies. They're figuring out what is the most efficient way to do things. They're trying to create, um, you know, they're trying to create reusable bags so that we can use the, th the things that we crochet over and over again. And so however your club can think through, what do we bring to this? What do we, what are our expertise what do we bring to this question of how do we make a, a more sustainable future? Bring that to me, bring that to any of the other clubs, and you can absolutely be part of this event. There's no, there's no gatekeeping here. We want everybody to be involved. We want to bring in as many voices as possible to build, like I said, a more sustainable future. 
Absolutely. I think this event is really going to help demystify sustainability because it can be kind of a hard thing to get into. I feel like it can be a little bit overwhelming when you look at the bigger picture and climate change and everything. You might not know where to start, but there's little things you can do. And I feel like this event is really going to help with that. Yeah, no, I definitely think that having it open to different orgs, like you were saying, I didn't, when you mentioned the crochet club, I at first was also kind of like, you know, in that spot where I was like, okay, like, how would that tie back to sustainability? But obviously, you know, you guys have found that. And also with the off the wall, off the wall gallery. Do you guys have anything else that you would like to share with students or anything that, you know, you would recommend or any advice you want to give? Um, to students who are attending the upcoming events? I think my advice would be uh, to be open to explore different topics and different ways to apply yourself. I think for me, I'm still exploring the different facets of sustainability, and I don't want to confine myself to a specific niche. I think there is a little bit of pressure in the field of sustainability to have a niche and to focus on that, to really become an expert on it. But I think the best um, the best professionals and students in sustainability are those who have a holistic perspective and a wide variety of experiences. And I think those who are open to explore and connect, um, engage with different people and organizations are going to be most successful and um, have the best well-being as well. If I may ask, I wanted to know a little bit about like careers and sustainability because that's something that I considered as well. And I wanted to know how you, Morgan, plan to have a career in sustainability and what avenue you want to go down. Hmm. So I'm still deciding what path I want to go on. I've had some experience in policy. My concentration is policy and sustainability, and that's kind of what I lean more towards based on my abilities, I think. Uh, I think I just do well with understanding a policy and pushing new policy. So that's the path I'm considering the most. Um, Maybe working for a governmental agency could be the path for me. Um, But with some recent classes um, that relate more to biology and wildlife conservation, I don't want to leave that path unexplored. Um, So I think hopefully this summer and this next year, I'll be able to dive into that a bit more. And that's what I've been trying to do with GLOBE as well. Since we focused more on policy and uh, Uh, waste reduction and recycling last semester this semester we have more of a biology focus and for from my perspective i just want to broaden people's understanding of what a career in sustainability or career in climate solutions might look like i think that traditionally we've thought of this as environmental scientists and policy makers and i really want to open this up to anybody from any major. So let's say you're an engineering major. Well, you can be doing material sciences to figure out how do we get more efficient materials? How do we reuse things? How do we recycle things? You can be in lead, leadership in energy and environmental design. It's a Basically, it's a certification that certifies that a building is sustainable. For instance, the honors college is lead silver, right? And every new building on USF's campus actually has to be lead silver. So that's something that engineers could do. Let's say you're an English major, then you can do journalism in climate change, or you could write fiction, imagining what our futures might look like if we solved climate change, if we didn't solve climate change. How will our relationships change as our technologies evolve to address more more of the issues that come up from climate change. If you are a lawyer, maybe be an environmental lawyer, maybe think about policy, maybe think about all of these kinds of things, right? Basically, there's no there's no discipline that isn't touched by the environment and sustainability because we live in our environment. We live in the world, right? Everybody does. And so what I want to do is encourage people to understand that this is a this is a human problem. This is a problem that our generations are trying to tackle together. And too often we're not doing it together. 
we're doing it separately in our own little bubbles. And I want to try and use this event to bring people across the university together to start thinking about these problems. Because when you encounter somebody who comes from a very different context than you, that's when you get new ideas. That's when you figure out, oh, I never thought about that. Maybe I can integrate that into the way that I've been trying to solve this problem. And that's how we make innovation happen. That's how we make new discoveries and start building community. And I really want this event to facilitate that process. So please, even if you think you're not interested in climate change or sustainability, just try one of the events and see if you like it. Because I can't see a reason why you wouldn't want to live in a healthier environment, a more sustainable place. So yeah, I think that uh, definitely when you're looking into sustainability and you're looking into careers, it helps so much to go to something like this because as someone who is biomed with like interest in marketing, um, I don't think I realized how much like, you know, how many different careers there were with that until I started attending attend, uh, events that do have that interdisciplinary and kind of have that like crossover. And there's so many professors and stuff that do um, sustainability with whatever degree you could think of. Right. And I think it's really cool to have that exposure here. And that's great that there's going to be a whole career and internship fair. I'm actually really excited to go to that because I am a business marketing major and I still have a passion for sustainability. So I feel kind of conflicted because it's like I'm contributing to consumerism but <laughs> but which, you should market for exactly an organization that's doing incredible work is, i hope you, to be a part of that solution of the sustainability in business absolutely marketing is a tool right yes. marketing is a tool to communicate what organizations are interested in we have a huge marketing campaign for the climate teaching which is led by our incredible team and and dana and without them nobody would know that this event is happening Right. And this podcast is part of that marketing. And so I would say that we have we've put things into categories of good and bad and helpful and not helpful. But everything that we are learning is a tool and we can aim any of the things that we're learning in, in university towards building more sustainable futures or ignoring sustainable futures or actively working against sustainable futures. And that's a choice that we can all make. But also you know, when I was starting in my career, sustainability careers were hard to find. It was, they were rare and few and far between. But it's now the fastest growing sector of our economy is the, the green sector, right? Renewable energy and green marketing and environmental, social and governance um, organizations, right? So things like ESG and businesses, every major Fortune 500 company now has a sustainability team, right? So it's it's growing so quickly that there are so many opportunities for people to get involved now. And people, people who are currently professors don't know to point their students at that because when they were entering the market, those jobs didn't exist. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to see how the future plays out and what different careers will come up with that. There truly is something for everyone. I want to thank you guys again for coming in today, Dr. Hargrove and Morgan. Um, we really appreciate your time and telling us a lot about how students can get involved. Um, and we want to tell students to continue to stay involved. Um, we have the uh, Microplastics Marine Lab that was mentioned by Morgan coming up this Thursday. And we have the crocheting coming up on Friday. So keep an eye out for those and all the other events on the website. Um, and yeah, thank you guys again for coming. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for hosting us. All right, we are back in the studio, and it was so great to talk to Dr. Hargrove and Morgan. On a personal level, it was super important for me because I was able to see how sustainability ties into my career in marketing. So I'm super excited to just do more research and see what I can do in the future. Yeah, I definitely think I learned a lot about, you know, the interdisciplinary nature of everything that they're doing, yeah. especially with the crochet club. That that was so interesting to me. I know. Um, I'm super excited to just attend all the events. Like, Yeah, no, definitely. And even the gallery. As a photographer, I didn't realize yeah. that we could contribute through marketing, you know, in that exactly. way. Exactly.
And with that said, don't forget to check out the Honorable Newsletter and our website, usf.edu forward slash honors for upcoming events and to check out the Climate Teach-In tab for a list of all of the events later this week, their times and locations. That will do it for this week's episode. The Honor Roll podcast is recorded in the Judy Genshaft Honors College at the University of South Florida, Tampa campus. Production assistance is provided by Honor student Abby Malloy and Professor Adam Davidson. Thank you all so much for listening, and please do not forget to rate and review our podcast. We really appreciate your feedback. Tune in next time where we'll be sharing more Honor stories. Until, Until next time, time go, go Bulls! Bulls.